A lot of applications go through the same life cycle. They start out as a small tool that then evolve into an application that is run in a wider set of environments or contexts. Um, and they all kind of have the same problem. At a certain point, it stops being uh, a script and actually becomes more of a developed application. And at that point, it often needs better configuration. Configuration often allows you to separate where it's been run. So when I'm running something on my desktop as part of development, I want it to talk to different servers, I want it to have different limits on its memory and its usage, than when it's running in anger on an actual server or out in the wild. So a lot of these things go through the same sort of life cycle. They start off very simple. Maybe they start off as a Jupyter notebook or some kind of simple script and then it sort of evolve over time. And at that point, you have to work out how to bring configuration into it. And there are a couple of options. Um, but I think it's, uh, we haven't done this one of these for a while. It's time for... Python Library of the Day. Boop, 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 hiss. Okay, so before we get too far into it, I want to have an application. And often I say things start with a script. So you may have something like uh, import requests, uh, requests.get, uh, https, google.com, and then do um, uh, r equals print r.status code. Uh, that might be how your application st starts. So when we start doing this Python 1, it runs, you get an output running. And over time, what happens is you start going, well, actually, um, uh, that's going to go inside of a function. Um, and then for some reason, that may be inside, maybe it gets refactored, it's inside another function over here. And then finally, that's all caused from the front. So at the, this point, nothing's really changed. It's still going to make the same request. But at some point, you start realizing this, this database server or whatever needs to be more configurable. One of the go-to answers is, is to use environmental variables. And environmental variables are um, a really old concept, actually. They go back to about 1979. Um, there were forms of it before, but the way we understand them now is, is that Unix release in 79. Older than I am. Hard to believe sometimes. Um, but what they are is basically allows us to set a variable in the context of the process being run. I know I said Unix, Windows has them, BSD has them, Umac has them, Linux has them. Um, and they're all pretty much the same. It's a bunch of name value pairs and usually only strings. Python has a great way to interact with them. So usually you do something like set environmental variable. You can just say um, that on the front of the process you want to run. So um, that will set the, the, the variable target to being foo at this point. Well, actually, I want that to be google.com, don't I? Um, like that. So at this point I can import OS and then pretty much wherever I am. But the reason I'm doing this by the way is that here I don't really want to have uh, an argument passed in here because I have if I have an arg here I have to get my arg so x equals um, google.com or, or sys.args nor whatever, whatever that's going to be. And then I have to pass that x in there, which means I have to take it there. Then I have to pass it in there, that means I have to accept it there. And then it, it, it gets really complicated. The, the more my modules get broken out and the more I do class-based uh, design, this becomes a real challenge uh, to separate all these, these variables out. I'm very sorry, I seem to be beeping. So, yeah, you don't want to be passing in variables. You, you can do it that way, but you don't really. You want to use some kind of configuration manager. Um, if you were building this inside of an application framework like Django, Django comes with its own configuration manager. They've done the heavy lifting for you. But if you've built like a Flask or you built a little script without that kind of bigger framework, um, which I've had to do recently, uh, it becomes something that you want to have. And, and this library called uh, Python to Cobra help you. But first of all, it's using environmental, environmental variables. Um, basically, I'm just going um, to bring it out as a separate variable first of all. You don't have to. Um, it's just I want to print it off. Um, so I'm just going to change this here, change that to being get the URL, and then I'm going to print the URL. So we just see how it's how it's being manipulated. Um, again, logging should be using logging. So you see I'm, I'm going to Google.com. What we're going to do now is we're going to get rid of that. Percentage, yes. Ooh. Where's my percentage gone? There it is. 
and then I like percentage formatting. You may notice that. I really like it. Um, os.environ.com. Um, I can't remember how my code works. That get, and then the name of the environmental variable. So in this case, target. That seems suitable. Um, and then if I run this, it's going to google.com. Doesn't really prove anything. If I do co.uk, it'll go to google.co.uk. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The challenge becomes that this works fine when I'm running it from a shell. But when you start running it from the other situation, setting environmental variables isn't always that easy. Um, there's also reasons why environmental variables are pain, um, or we have to set them and configure them. Um, there are some other challenges with environmental variables as well, such as if I don't want it to be a string, uh, if I want this to be a number. So if I want to do um, num players uh, or 10 divided by num. 10 divided by number of players. I don't know why I'm doing this. Maybe it's um, to print it off. Then straight away, th this this won't work because if I change that now to two, it's going to error. And it's saying basically that you can't you num players. I won't even put the right variable in. That's another. That's a completely different issue there. Num players. It's going to say I can't because this is a string, you can't divide into number by a string. It's not PHP, you can't do that. It doesn't automatically cast for you. And you could say, yeah, well, you know, I want to int that, but it becomes nasty because you've got to do all that work of handling those configuration values. And this is where Python decouple comes in. Python decouple, really nice little library. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're not gonna use this, we're gonna do from decouple import config. And here, I'm just going to use config. So I can literally replace any os.env get with config straight out of the box. Now that's going to throw me the same error. It's going to say you can't do the same thing. But I can now say actually cast equals int. Uh, I believe I put strings quote marks around it. I might not. I might just be able to say, nope, I don't. I just say int like that. Okay. And it, it does the casting for me. So it's getting a float because I'm doing divide 10, divide always gives a float. Um, but I don't need to worry now about this. And maybe, though, I say, well, maybe it's going to default to 4. So this time, if I don't have the environmental variable set, it still works. My code doesn't fall over. So I can set a default and say you can override this default. And straight away, my code, I spend more time thinking about what my code does and less time worrying about, oh, I've got to handle some user input error, especially when these may be run by just me. These may be tools I want to run in different places. So you can start using this config to handle environmental variables. Next big uh, massive thing is here. I can now make a settings to any. It also allows env.var files, but I can make a settings to any file. Um, this one would be just settings uh, without going to any exotic things. It's num underscore players. Uh, I'm going to put eight in there, eight players here. And now I'm just going to do python one.py. And because that's got an environmental variable file, it picks up the environmental variable, uh, sorry, the settings file, it picks up the settings file. There is an order of precedence if you have a um, local value like this, an environmental variable, it will override the settings file. And I think settings file over, I think envar overrides settings files as well. So if you have both files, I would suggest not doing that because anywhere where you have to have some implicit understanding of an order, um, that's usually bad because someone else may not have that understanding and be unable then to configure or fix the system. So at this point, my my declared in environmental variable overrode my settings file. So it's already got that inheritance built in. And again, those are just features which are free when you use this library. Um, so that's it really as a, as a library. It has defaults, it has casts, uh, you can cast to integers, booleans, uh, by default it's a string, um, it, and it, yeah, it just works. So as, as a library, I really recommend it. Um, it's got quite a hefty intro to it um, in terms of, of, you don't really need to know about like encodings and things like that unless you're going to get into uh, the weeds. One thing is, there is a difference between any files and n files. This isn't a Python decouple difference. This is just a, a fact. 
So if you notice here the percentile, if to escape a percentage in an init file, you have to do percentage percentage, whereas here you don't. However, slashes are different in the two systems, so you do get advantage on one over, over the other. Uh, comments work in both files, which I, I like being able to comment, put comments in files, which is really powerful. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would really recommend if, you, if you're trying to take your application from a script up to the next level, using Synet Python decouple really gives it a lot of maturity really quickly. Uh, anything which allows you to do those configurations, it's super powerful. Um, and yeah, give it a go. If you like this, like this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode.